Greetings, it's the Saturday edition, and yes, I am not able to return to my normal live posting duties on the Media Speaks yet. However, it does look like I should be getting my normal schedule back soon, so hopefully I'm not going to be gone a lot longer on the Media Speaks. But while I am, I've done a pretty good job of making sure you've had the news from the science front, and uh, this will be no exception. Um, Slash.org, why Microsoft shouldn't patch Internet Explorer flaw. I totally disagree with this. Why? Because some of us went to school and learned how to run Windows. I get the security upgrades. I get the whole gaming. There are a lot of people that want them, and I think they should have to, keep patching this. Because they don't want all the new features. You know, and I'm running the newest Windows on here. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is some people don't want nor need it. There's also a lot of dangers in shutting down uh, where they're running inside of nuclear power plants. Now, DJ Aram has made the argument many times of passing time that they shouldn't have never used Windows for this very reason. They shouldn't have even built the power plant for an even more obvious reasons. But um, they did. And they're using Windows. And they should have to patch these things. This isn't something you want them, um, the, the tech guys coming in and shutting down the nuclear power plant and hoping there isn't some kind of a bug. Because I have a degree in IMT and I can tell you this, there's always a bug in just about every code that you write. And uh, moving operating systems on active nuclear power plants, ah. Uh, uh, so I, I disagree with this article greatly, but it, it will affect you all. So I've included it on the news from the science front. Sebastian Anthony argues that Microsoft is setting an awful precedent by caving in and issuing a fix for Windows XP. He's a moron. Yes, tardy governments and IT administrators can breathe a little easier for a little bit longer, writes Anthony. And yes, your mom and dad are yet again safe in their use of the old Windows XP beige box. But to what end? Isn't it just del delaying the inevitable? Yeah, shell out that money, people. We're not going to upgrade Windows for you. Just shell out that money. Shell out that money. BS. And don't give me Mac. Mac gives away their operating system when they upgrade it. Uh, at least they did last time. Lance Ulanoff argues that Microsoft can't turn a blind eye to the security of XP users. No, they should keep fixing it. Even though the company ended support for the 12-year-old operating system on April 8th, which they should not have done, a fact that Microsoft has been warning about for literally years, which they shouldn't do. But this won't be the only vulnerability found in XP, says Dwight Silverman. If Microsoft makes an exception now, what about the flaw found after this one, and the next, and the one after that at Infinitum? Even though Microsoft has released a patch for the IE flaw, the Windows XP is included. It's time to move on, really. Yeah, just, just move on, jerk. I don't want to hear that tired, if it ain't broke, don't fix it line. That is true. XP is broke, and it's just, uh, it's more over every time. Upgrade to a newer version of Windows or switch to another modern operating system, such as OS X or Linux. Uh, for those that know how to run Linux, I'd say go Linux, but... No, I disagree with that article greatly. Uh, one more thing I want to get to, and then I'm just going to give you a suggestion before I give the show back to the capable hands of Kyle and D-Lake and the rest of the Media Speaks crew. RT, DARPA working on brain implants to help restore memory, and I am being inundated with articles of people not wanting this to happen. Can it be abused? Yes. Um, a gun can be abused. Do I think we should ban guns? No, I do not. Um, are there morality issues here? Is some uh, Joseph Mingula-like jerk going to take this in a frightening direction? I'm sure they will. But if the greatest number of people put reasonable safeguards on this, then I say leave it up to the patient. Leave it up to the patient. The the patient's going to know if he's suffering these problems or not. So we're going to go into this real quick. Um, and I'm not a big fan of DARPA, but DARPA working on brain implants to help restore memory. I, I, I don't trust DARPA, but not everything that every organization does is, is awful. Um, could this be used for bad? Yeah, of course. I could use this computer for bad if I chuck it at you. A uh, memory loss could soon be a thing of the past. U.S. military researchers say that they're developing a new brain implant that could restore mental f faculties. 
This could bring a new lease on life to millions around the world, but raises ethical concerns, as it should. The project is being developed by the Defense Advancement Research Agency and could help soldiers who have suffered brain injuries during service or millions of sufferers of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, avoid Teflon and uh, lots of coconut oil uh, will do wonders for that as well. The program is expected to take around four years to complete and is part of a $100 million program by U.S. President Barack Obama to gain a better understanding of the human brain, according to the AFP. I hate to think why he wants to do it, but this is one of the few things I can say that he's doing that I am in favor of. Now, will he use it like some, you know, who... That's the great fear. But this is not a bad idea, friends. This learning how the brain works is not a bad idea. If you have been injured in the line of duty and you can't remember your family and want to be able to restore those kinds of functions, DARPA program manager Justin Sanchez said this week at the conference in Washington, D.C., convened on the Center for the Brain Health, the, the brain health at the University of Texas. Now, again... The soldier knows whether or not he wants these risks. He doesn't know who his mom is, his dad is, he's all messed. It's up to him if he wants to do this. There can be side effects, which I'm going to be giving to you in a minute. But, I mean, at some point, you have to let go of fear and uh, hope and work towards, not even just hope like an idiot, but work towards safeguarding these kinds of things so that they can do the greatest number of good when the very least a bit of harm. And uh, I, again, I don't, forced on no one, at no point have I ever said that I think you should have to have this done to you, ever. He believes it goes on that it is possible to develop prosthetic devices that can interact with the hippocampus. The hippocampus is the key part of the brain, which is used for the consolidation of information, including the short-term and long-term memory. However, the ability to manipulate the brain does raise ethical questions. Arthur Kaplan, a medical ethicist at the New York University's Langone Medical Center, says, When you fool around with the brain, you are fooling around with personal identity. The cost of altering the mind is that you risk losing a sense of self, and that is kind of a risk we've never faced. Uh, first of all, untrue. It is a risk we have faced when we learned brain surgery as a species. It's a risk many people, it's the most terrifying thing ever. They face getting surgeries done and not knowing what's, what's going to be okay. There are epileptics who've had to have their brain cut right down the middle in order to prevent seizures. They don't know if they're going to be okay. So this is nothing they've never faced before. It could very much alter their mind and in certain brain surgeries it's happened. Hell, the anesthesia after some heart surgeries have done this to people. Second of all, isn't their life already altered and their sense of self greatly altered by not knowing any of the, their family, their friends, uh, in some instances not being able to remember their wife, uh, not knowing their kids' names? I, is it worth the risk? It should be up to them. In theory, the new technology, if and when it is developed, could alter the personality of a human, with Kaplan mentioning that it could make soldiers more violent and callous. Yes, it could, and they need to be told that. It doesn't need to be hidden, and then they put this in their brain, and they go off and beat their kid to death. It needs to be, they need to know what kind of risk they're getting in, and they can base it upon how bad they view their life compared to what they knew that their life was. Or God forbid, maybe even what they don't know that their life was, which might be even more frightening? I don't know. Some progress has already been made on helping to reduce tremors in people who are suffering from Parkinson's disease and even boosting memory in some patients who have contracted Alzheimer's. This has been achieved through the use of a progress called deep brain stimulation by sending electrical impulses to specific parts of the brain through a pacemaker. And I don't think that's a bad idea if the person wishes to risk it. Robert Hampson, who is an associate professor at Wake Forest University who is not connected to the DARPA project, has already tested some memory techniques on animals. His research on rodents and monkeys has shown that neurons in the hippocampus, which process memory, fire differently when they see red or blue, a picture of a face or a picture of a type of food. It says, using prosthetics designed to stimulate the hippocampus, Hampson was able to extend the short-term memory of work of his subjects. But to restore human-specific memory, the associate professor says the scientists would need to know the precise pattern for that memory. Lastly, it says the idea is to restore a function back to normal or near normal of the memory processing areas of the brain so that the person can access, access their formed memories and that they can form new memories as needed, Hampson said.
So let's hope it happens. Uh, and let's hope it's used wisely. Let's hope it's used like pacemakers are used for the heart. Let's hope it's not used for something nefarious. Guys, that's it. I was going to get to this, but I don't want to tie up the whole show. So go to news.sky.com and look up pilots to circle the globe in solar-powered plane. Interesting story. Don't have time to get to it, but I didn't want to at least not mention it because it is interesting. Guys, we're going back to the Saturday edition. This is the mediaspeaks.com. Sam I. B. DeGangie of The Correct Views. See ya. Christelle to the rescue.